After three years, 12 weeks, and five days, the moment of true redemption finally nears closer. Outside the main crew's base, Yuji sits with Amai going over their past experiences together. Knowing that Amai had managed to save Angel after Sukuna sent her hurling through some of the nearby buildings, he thanks him, as now they still have some kind of chance in this messed up situation. This confuses our Jewish Japanese man, because from what he's heard, Yuji had no way of fighting without Sukuna's strength buff. However, our boy explains that just recently he was informed that his body is like a curse object dipped in Sukuna's energy. Now, he's going to eat anything to pummel that creep and save his boy. Having strolled inside, Choso hands Yuji this extremely important piece of information. It's a book that records all of Yuji's soul research along with some more information on the prison realm itself. Yuji thanks Choso, but not for the book. Instead, he says he's thankful for his brothers. Well, that's how I've interpreted it, as Choso tells him that it's okay. They'll live on inside of him. Which is freaking massive if you think about it. Like, I think this just proves that Yuji has already consumed all of the other cursed wombs, and they're all currently chilling out inside of his inner world. My actual theory on all of this here is that the image Choso had in his head, yes, the picnic one that made him, like, collapse to the floor in Yuji versus Choso's fight, well, like with what we've seen recently with Sakuna and him being foreshadowed on the cover of chapter 1 or something like that, there are so many things that are brought up earlier for specific reasons, and this is another. That picnic will happen. Yuji's inner world will change from the hellish landscape it was before to what we saw in Choso's vision. Skipping away from the boys though, chilling up against the wall smoking a black, Shoko just thinks on how Gojo promised he wouldn't leave anyone alone. But now, that idiot's all alone, and there are a bunch of monsters needing his help. She pleads for Gojo to come back, as everyone needs him. Everyone does indeed need our man, and like half of the globe expected, with Hannah having been healed just previously, Takaba offers to decorate the building with some origami to celebrate his return. So, as we all presumed when Gojo first got trapped, like I think Kenjaku told him specifically when he was explaining what the curse realm was, but time doesn't physically run in that prison realm. So due to this, they don't know what Gojo felt in the last 19 days since he was sealed. He doesn't know what happened with the Zen and Zimaki, with Megami, and Numaki, the remnants of Shibuya, and everything that has happened after that point. For almost half of the series he's been sealed now, which is only 19 days in the JJK world, but still, it might have felt like just a moment for Gojo, or as if every second was like a hundred years inside of the prison realm, some Itachi level of like Genjutsu or something. So because of that fact, Angel is worried about Gojo's mental state. Shoko points out also that if he is confused and upset, then it could be really dangerous to unseal Gojo where they are now. Instead of the building then, everyone decided to take the back door and make their way to an undisclosed area to attempt Gojo's unsealing. Having placed the realm on the ground in front of them, Inumaki gives the signal and Hannah, who was floating above, activates Angel's curse technique, Jacob's Ladder. Just like with Megami, a massive blast of light beams down upon the prison realm. Weirdly though, as Yuji quietly approaches, calling out for his sensei, he realises that there is nothing at all. He looks over at the other vessel and Hannah tries to explain that it, it isn't her fault. Like they had expected earlier, Gojo might have just turned evil and the light from Jacob's ladder could have actually made him disappear. However, their thoughts are shattered as they suddenly feel the earth itself begin to roll. Elsewhere, Kenny, the big brain antagonist, like man went full anime here and was like, huh, I planned for this moment, and placed him 8,000 meters deep in a trench. He'll never escape, he'll drown before he even makes it to the surface. It's most likely the Mariana Trench, what he's, you know, stuck him in here, but I'm not 100% sure. It's near Japan, and the Mariana Trench is also near Japan. But after 19 grueling days, or 3 years, 12 weeks, and 5 days in our own world, Satoru Gojo returned. Appearing in a blaze of pure deadness, Gojo floats there, ready to face and destroy the moron who stole his best friend's body. Kenjaku tries to irritate the greatest sorcerer to ever live, but Gojo tells the fiend that he should be choosing his words carefully, as these are his final moments. Taken by surprise himself though, Gojo easily manages to block a few strikes from the other body swapper. Taking his new appearance in, Gojo just states that Megami has indeed changed from the last time they saw each other. Finally, remember when Sukuna said the day he takes over Yuji, he'll wipe out Gojo first? Well, now with him having swapped up his skin, Sukuna just mentions that it turned out to be this brick's body. But either way, nothing has changed. Hearing this though, Gojo ridicules the King of Curses as some weak loser who decided to run away from Yuji. And now, after switching up, he's acting all high and mighty. Utterly pathetic. 
a roommate who's just showed up is enraged with the fact that Gojo mocked her man and tries to attack, but gets utterly fodderized in one panel as Gojo sends her flying through a building with a single punch. And like, like this is actually insane. She alone was able to fight or hold off Maki and Yuji alone, along with that time in Shibuya where she stopped everyone allowing her and Kenjaku to safely escape that battle. But nah, Gojo ends her in one punch. Dude is completely and utterly different. Kenny then suddenly drops back in and stops Sukuna from continuing with the abuse hurling. Gojo also jokingly thinks he's got some stuff to get done before they battle it out. He mocks the King of Curses, asking if he was really listening to a guy that looked like a poorly sewn rubbish bag. Continuing with Kenny's chat though, Gojo asks for the current date, and after hearing that it's nearing the end of November, proposes that this entire battle take place on the 24th of December. Having heard Gojo's proposal, Kenjaku cracks up at the romanticism of that specific situation and agrees. So, do we all remember back to the very beginning of the series when Yuji had asked Gojo if Sukuna is stronger than him? Of course, at the time Gojo stated that it may be tough if Sukuna regains all of his powers, causing Yuji to ask if he'd lose. Gojo, probably being a little cocky to the newcomer at the time, had replied that he'd win though. Now here, back facing off against the strongest foes in the story, Gojo states the same thing. I will win. Boom, so that there is the day no one other than dad, Kojo, was freed from the prison realm. It was just, you know, like something a little bit different on my channel, but I really wanted to cover this magnificent moment on my channel like everyone else is probably going to because it's absolutely amazing and we've been waiting for it for years now, like if you've been reading the manga. So uh, I'm, I'm too stoked to actually have it finally come true. Like the hype I had while writing and recording this was absolutely insane. Right now, I'm actually curious as to if Yuji and everyone else even realizes he's already made it inside of Tokyo or wherever. Plus, am I tripping, but did this man just invade a barrier after a rule was made that no one else could join? Maybe I'm wrong and Kenjaku and Sukuna have already left that area, but I'd love to know your thoughts on that down below. I think what we're going to get next over this like coming month is a bit of training with Yuji and everyone else building up to like December the 24th. It's so good to see Gojo back, but I'm also curious as to what Gege has in store for him now. He always said that he hated riding Gojo because he was so strong. Now though, is there a way for him to ride it so it doesn't seem like Gojo just noticed absolutely everyone? And will they be able to rescue Megami? Plus, I also love how like this was foreshadowed just a few months back with some of the new art that was posted in combination with the season 2 announcement. This was just written off the basic translations, so a few things might have changed by the time that the Viz translations come out on Monday, but they're always a bit of arse, as we all know. But last time I accidentally called Yorozu a dude, or like the past Yorozu a dude, turns out she was also a female a thousand years ago as well, so that was my fault there. If you want me to cover everything with Sakona versus Yorozu, then push this video to 5k likes and leave a comment down below with like, what's your favourite point throughout this entire story so far? I'd, I'd absolutely love to know, and then I might cover those specific points as well. And if you are new around here, then subscribe as it really helps out with the algorithm. Plus, if you want early access and to like appear with these awesome new people on the screen, then check out my Patreon, which I will leave down in the description below. But for now, it's been your professional degenerate Diavolo, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye.